Hey everybody, Bob here and welcome to Making Stuff. This is video number four in the filament extruder project. And in this video, I'm going to be mounting the motor to the uh, extruder assembly so we can turn the drill bit. And what I have got here is a 7 16th deep socket that I picked up at the flea market. I also got one of these. I don't know if I need it or not, but I got it and we're gonna try it out. And a three quarter inch socket. And I also took a little piece of hex and I had to grind the point off to make it more square. I think you can probably tell more there. So it would fit in the ends like so, so I can make a coupling. Um, that's all I had. None of the stores here had any 3 8 square stock and I didn't feel like waiting a week for a little one inch piece of square stock to show up in the mail. So I just looked around and made something that will work. And all of this is going to mount to the motor, which is a DC wheelchair motor. And what I've done is I've put a nylon uh, lock nut on the end here. And the idea is that the socket will go on the end, this will go on there, that will go on there, and then this will connect to the drill bit. And that gives me a little bit of play if, if this is off, but like I said, I may not need uh, this little U-joint socket, but I've got it just in case. And one thing... Uh, when I do stuff like this, I go to the flea market to get this stuff because if you went to the store, that socket would cost probably eight to twelve dollars, and at the flea market you can get them for like fifty cents or a buck. So I've got this little uh, sheet of plywood that I'm going to mount everything to temporarily. Uh, later on, I'm going to build a nicer um, housing and enclosure to hold everything, but this will just kind of keep everything from moving around. Um, I've kind of hooked it up just to do a little test and it does work but the motor wants to flop around and the assembly wants to move so I want something to hold it down tight um, keep it all nice and secure while I'm testing. Okay, so I have robbed the motor controller off of the Segway so I can hook it up to this motor and do a quick test. And the quickest way to do this is I'm just going to use this remote control radio. This thing's already set up for it, so uh, I've got it running off of this 12 volt battery. So let's see how well this works. And here we go. Looks like it's gonna work pretty good. So that's full speed that way. Let's try it in reverse. Full speed in reverse. So everything's turning, we don't have any binding and it turned out I did not need uh, the little U-joint which kind of cut down on the length of the overall machine. But uh, it looks like it's gonna work okay. So let's go on to the heater and the electronics. Alright, so what I've done here is I've taken my cap, the end cap, this is where the plastic's going to come out and I've mounted it up in my bench top lathe here and I'm going to use this center finding drill bit to find the center. Uh, this is a lot more accurate and it's a lot easier to do on the lathe than it is on a drill press or by hand. and. Don't let this discourage you. You do not have to have a lathe to do this, but I've got one and it's gonna make the job a little bit easier. 
so I'm going to use it and I'll apologize now for the camera angle it's just the way this is set up in my shop it's hard to get really good uh, lathe shot on this bench top lathe Well, that didn't work out quite as well as I thought it would. I didn't quite hit the center there, but uh, this is still usable. So I'm going to go ahead and drill my hole uh, all the way through on this side for the 1.75 millimeter filament. Okay, so there's my hole in there. And in case you're wondering, I used a number 51 drill bit. I've got one of these uh, numbered set of drill bits and 51 is 0 0.067, which was the closest without going over. Uh, the next one is 0 0.070 and 1.75 is roughly about 0 0.68. So this is about, this hole is about a thousandth too small. I figured it'd be better to start small because I can always drill it out bigger but I can't make it smaller. So uh, I'll start with that 51 and I may have to move up to a number 50 bit but uh, we'll see how this works first. So if you remember earlier in the video I said that this part you can just barely see it from here forward was the only part of the drill bit that was 5 8 So this has got to come off. The drill bit's also just a little bit too long, so that worked out pretty good. And I'm going to attempt to take this off with an angle grinder right now. All right, so I've got the nozzle all mounted on here. Now it's time for the thermocouple. Uh, this is the thermocouple that I'm using. And what this will do is it will register the heat and control the heater. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tape it right here with some Kapton tape, which that's tape that's specially made for handling high heat situations. So. Uh, I'm going to tape it on right there and then we'll put the heater on. All right, everything is hooked up and ready to go. I've got my heater band. I've got the thermocouple taped to the nozzle underneath the thermal or the heater band. Let's swing around here. Here is a solid state relay, a PID controller. I got this off of eBay as a kit. And. I have a motor controller and a 12 volt battery. The motor controller, I know you guys, somebody's going to ask about it. It is made by Canakit. Have no idea if the company's still in business. I got this off of SparkFun probably six, seven, maybe even eight years ago. So uh, I don't know if SparkFun sells it, if the company's still in business. Maybe you can buy them online. I don't know. But for testing purposes, this is going to work out great. Uh, probably won't be in the final product or the final revision. And let me move back over here. And I have everything hooked up. I do not have power going to the heater band. Um, I wanted to go over everything before powering it all up. And I've got a little bit of plastic in the hopper some test plastic in there and I am going to fire it up here and see what I can do for my first run okay so I have got this up to temperature we have the nozzle sitting there oozing plastic so I know that it's ready to go so I'm gonna just chop that off and let's hook up the motor here and see what we get. There we go. And it tends to want to stick. So 
That's why I'm wearing gloves so I can pull it off of there. There we go. Once you get it started, it's not so bad. But it sometimes it wants to stick to that nozzle. And that crunching noise is just the bit sharing off those pellets before it goes in the pipe. Oh, it's stuck to my board here. Eh. Try it again. Okay, so here's a first little piece of filament that I've got out of the printer, and it's close. I mean, I'm, I was just pulling on the uh, filament as it came out, so I'm satisfied there, but there's an issue here, and hopefully this thing will focus. There you go. Right here in the center, you can see that is a little shiny piece of metal. Now the camera is not picking up on the shininess, but you can see this filament's contaminated with something. And luckily I got clear. You can see it in there. And I am thinking this is probably the paint from the drill bit. Every now and then there's a little shiny piece like this big piece that was up here right there. That's definitely metal right there. The other kind of has a blue sometimes tint to it so that's what I'm thinking. It's the paint on that drill bit so I may have to put the drill bit in the sandblaster and uh, get that paint off. It may wear all wear itself off but uh, Hopefully it's not going to be too big of an issue. There's some more right there. All right, so there is the first run of the filament extruder. I hope you guys like that. I uh, just want to go over a few things. The first is this, the motor controller. SparkFun no longer sells it. It's on their retired product list, but Canakit is still in business. You can go to their website and buy this. I had forgotten just how nice this motor controller is. It's like 50 amps continuous current. Uh, it'll go up to 30 volts. Uh, you can control its pulse width modulation. You can control the frequency and the duty cycle. Uh, it's, it's a nice controller. So I think I'm gonna put this in the filament extruder instead of buying another one that I had, had planned on using. Uh, the other thing I wanna go over is the filament size. It's a little on the small side. I think what I'm going to do is open up that uh, hole on the nozzle a little bit and then try and pull the filament to the correct size. So by pulling it, it'll, it'll thin it out. So I'm going to make the hole a little bit bigger than what it should be and then, and then try that. And also the contaminants. It is the paint that you see in there. Um, I pulled the whole thing apart and you can see the paint coming off the drill bit and so what I'm going to do is probably just let it run and it's going to just scrape all that paint off hopefully by the time that I get to the point that I'm going to be making some filament for use. I'm still just running pellets through there um, just as a test. I've still got to get the puller done and some type of a water bath or a cooler. And so I'm hoping that by the time I've done all of that and I'm ready to make some serious usable filament that I will have gotten all of that paint off that bit. If not, I'll have to pull it apart and run it through the sandblaster. And the sandblaster is way over here in the corner of the shop with about, I don't know, a ton of stuff piled on top of it. So I'm trying really hard not to dig that out. And I hope you like what you saw. Uh, give me the thumbs up, subscribe, and thanks for watching.